Today I got my hands on something I'm really excited about, an external GPU from HGW Zone, the gaming and AI box. We were pretty lucky to get an early sample with the full features, while the commercial version may be a bit more refined in appearance. But that couldn't take away from the fact that we love it. This gadget is so cool that it pretty much accomplishes everything we've ever imagined for the graphics card box. The version I got is powered by an AMD Radeon RX 6600M graphics card with an 80W TDP and 8GB VRAM, which you might have heard about on some gaming laptops. Well, unlike those bulky eGPU products on the market, the gaming and AI box surprisingly has a very compact size with a built-in 240W GAN power supply. Its compatibility is awesome, supporting devices with the Thunderbolt 3 and 4 or USB 4 ports. Thunderbolt ports used to be only seen on expensive laptops, well now, thanks to USB 4, we can already see the future of normal laptops and mini PCs getting modularized with such a compact but powerful graphic card. There's no unboxing this time, and since we got an early sample, the packaging is obviously not informative. What we got is just a Type-C cable compatible with Thunderbolt and a power cable apart from the eGPU model. But here I have to remind you guys, besides the version I got, SGW Zone also released another RTX 3070 version with a 120W TDP, which is pretty insane. But I still prefer the 6600M version because this one can also work with Mac devices that are powered by the Intel chips, and is driver-free to conveniently plug and play. In terms of design, since I got the early version, the gaming and AI box uses a 3D printed black case, which will be updated in later official products. But of course, the super cool round screen here will remain the same. It can be quite informative to display some performance parameters of the connected devices, such as temperature, clocking, and so on. And what's interesting is that you can also showcase your own pictures or videos here as a geek deco. Well, mm, pretty weird, right? Compared with some regular eGPU products, the graphic box offers a lot more ports. There are two HDMI 2.0 and a DP 1.4 for video output, and there are also two 40 GBVS Thunderbolt compatible USB 4 ports. In addition, you even can find the other three USB 3.0 ports. So to speak, this eGPU can even act as a docking station in addition to providing additional graphics performance. The USB 4 UFP port can even support an extra 85 watt PD power supply for connected devices, which means you can even power up and strengthen graphic performance with a single cable for the laptop. This graphics box gets a maximum of 240 watt power, which is more than enough to provide an extra 85 watt of charging in addition to its own power supply. Of course, I did a simple disassembly. The internal structure is quite neat, apart from the power supply, the GPU module, and the whole cooling solution. It's good to see the power supply part has a metal layer for shielding. I did not disassemble it further for safety reasons. But it's worth noting that the 6600M graphics card uses standard MXM interface, which means that this graphics card can be replaced for upgrade. This is amazing and also one of the most attractive things about the gaming and AI box to me. And SGW Zone omits to release a 40 series card in the future for users to upgrade. On top of that, there's a triple heat pipe cooler and a centrifugal fan on top of the GPU for cooling. Temperatures in gaming are great, only around 75 degrees Celsius at full power on the GPU. In daily use, the noise level is not annoying at all, but when the GPU is fully loaded, the fan would accordingly speed up to guarantee stable running, but the noise would become a bit more perceivable. But here, the brand also get their reason. SGW Zone explained that because the model will be upgradable in the future, it's designed to be more thermally robust to handle higher power output of more powerful GPUs. Well, that's really the way engineers think. The size of the gaming and the AI box is perfect for me. Well, of course, there are small size eGPUs on the market, but the funny thing about them is that they are often equipped with an external power adapter, bulky and silly. So it's very smart of the graphics box to use the built-in GAN power supply. Well, it's extremely easy to use. Make sure you get the right connection, USB 4 or Thunderbolt. For first use, just connect the eGPU to the PC and then install the graphics driver. After that, power on the PC and the eGPU, set the cable connection, done. Very simple, right? And the driver will also prompt you that you have successfully connected the external GPU. And if your PC support a PD power supply, all you need is just a compatible Type-C cable between them. Finally, let's talk about performance. The first question here, is there any performance loss? Well, yes, there is, but not much really. 
Taking the 66 Double OM as an example, in the 3D Mark Time Spec test, the graphics scored 6811, which is almost a 4% performance loss compared to 7101 score of the direct PCIe connection. Similarly, in the 5 Strike test, compared to the 19,000 scored by the direct connection to PCIe, there was a 6% performance loss. This is perfect acceptable with such a simple connection. Personally, I wouldn't be complaining over it. For gaming tests, I realized that most people who would consider buying an eGPU product are probably using integrated GPU. So I used the most common 96 EUXE graphics card for the comparison test, and mainly having fun with the graphic cards in the Geekcom Mini IT13 that we reviewed before and the Xiaomi gaming monitor with 21 by 9 ratio. In the Witcher 3 Remastered, using 3440 by 1440 in high quality, it averaged 52 FPS, a very good performance, the XE GPU only had a 10 FPS, a huge improvement in the gaming experience. In Cyberpunk 2077, using this resolution with the medium graphics, the gaming and AI box game run at an average of 49 FPS. With the same graphic settings, the XE graphics card was just under 10 FPS. I also tried my favorite game Genshin Impact and at high graphics, this GPU could maintain 60 FPS at high quality. Compared to the 20 FPS of the XG graphics, I can only say that this eGPU is really perfect for gamers. I also tested some eSport games. In Counter-Strike 2, the average FPS was around 160. If you pair it with a high refresh rate screen, you can get a truly eSport level gaming experience on a portable device. Outside of gaming, I also tried to run some AI apps on this eGPU, setting the resolution to 512 by 512 and steps to 20 in stable diffusion. Typing in some simple keywords and generating an image took about 25 seconds. The AGB VRAM clearly has a good performance in AI. I also tested the speed of a gaming and AI box video export. The same 5 minutes 4K 25fps video exported in Premiere took 6 minutes with the eGPU, while it took 11 minutes with the XE integrated GPU. This is very impressive and almost doubles the speed of the exported video. Of course, this improvement is not limited to Premiere. In software such as Photoshop, Lightroom, and DaVinci Resolve, the eGPU will bring a significant performance improvement. Overall, the gaming and AI box is really impressive with its mini size and built-in game power supply compared to traditional eGPU products. Compared to some smaller eGPU products, the gaming and AI box has a universal MXM graphics card and USB 4 connectivity, which means it has excellent upgradability and good compatibility. Also, I think the price of this product is very competitive. So if you're into it, please check out the link down below. It might change the way you work and play. Thank you for watching. This is Wolfgang from China. See you soon.